Okay, I'm going to critique Hoople's cat. Now, he decided he was going to take his pack out and go out on his property, maybe 10 minutes, and test his gear. Now, what I love about Hoople's cat, he's always very honest. Most people wouldn't have even videotaped this. And I've always said, test your gear, test your gear. And he's trying. And that's impressive. Now, let me say his biggest mistake was going out 10 minutes. That, that was even too far. He should have done this right outside the door. There was no reason to go that far out. But let's watch this video a little bit and let me critique it for you guys. And uh, let me show you what's going on. Look at how he's wrestling with this pack. You shouldn't have to do that. Okay, that's crazy how he's wrestling with that pack. Now, my pack up by the straps has adjustments where the um, the shoulder straps come out or go in. He probably has the same thing, but he's not aware of it. Because he doesn't know his gear. Now, the reason he's wrestling with his pack is because of how bulky he is. His winter coat, um, what he has under his winter coat, that makes everything much bulkier. He really fought to get that pack on. And that should have been a sign of him not being ready, is what that should have been, really. Now he goes outside, and the first thing I'm noticing is that hip belt is not on properly. He's gone and put it on, I mean, when you put a belt on around your hip, you're supposed to be able to tighten that down tight so the pack sits on your hips. And by doing so, the weight sits on your hips. And you'll notice when he's walking, he's bent over. You're not supposed to be bent over when you're walking. You see how his back is arched like that? He's carrying a lot of weight. The other thing about this is it's not squared up. His pack ain't squared up. Now that's an old pack. I, I don't know why he chose that pack or what drove him to it when, you know, there's some really amazing packs out there. Now I have sent Hoople's pack, of, uh, Hoople's pack. I have sent Hoople's cat a very long email on different equipment he should be running. But this is ridiculously heavy. Now he thought, I did send him a message and he thought that he was running 35 pounds. He didn't weigh it. There is no way that pack is 35 pounds. I'll tell you. The pack alone probably weighs 8 pounds. And then when you start getting everything that he's got in this pack, that there's just no way. No way at all. Now, he gets to his destination. He tells everybody he's only 10 miles, you know, 10 minutes out or whatever. And he explains about weeping willows and that. That's pretty good. But... A few parts I've noticed here. Now he's lucky he was only going, you know, 10 minutes or so. He said he needed one of those satellite emergency things you can press to come rescue him. And he probably does because one thing Hoople's cat is lacking the most is skills. And that's it. Before he even should have put that pack on, he should have went out and made fires. He literally should have a station outside his house to where he's making fires. Make fire in the rain, make fire in the snow, learn how to use a ferro rod, learn how to make char cloth. I've made lots of videos on this. Um, learn how to make fire and be very good at that skill. That takes time to learn and be very, very good at it no matter what the weather is. That's the first thing he should do before putting that pack on. Now, what I love about this is how he tries to talk as if he's an authority on this. And it's just one mistake after another. He's not an authority whatsoever. Now, he is clearing this, and he does have a shovel, which is good for the, um, for the north in Canada. But he really could have got a much cheaper shovel on Amazon for like 35 50 bucks. I mean, way cheaper. 
So there was no reason to carry all that weight in a shovel. Now, carrying a shovel in the north when you have snow is a good idea. I mean, especially if you've got a lot of snow. You can make a snow fort. You can make something you climb into. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can throw the snow up on the side of your tent to help keep insulated a little longer. Now, he talked about here not using the, you know, the... the um, what do you call it? He talked about there to where he was putting, he wasn't going to put the tarp under the tent. He should have done that. Every bit of insulation you put under your tent, also protecting your pad is very important. Now, he did show some pictures of people that are climbing on mountains and stuff like that. It's, it's his, his environment is nowhere close to that. Now, he does get his tent set up, but his biggest mistake here, what he should have done first, is he should have started a fire first, especially in that type of environment. And that sleeping bag, humongous. That sleeping bag is good down to, what did he put there? That pack is huge. And look at the size of that thing. Okay, that's good to zero Fahrenheit. 18 Celsius. It looks heavy. I mean, that looks like a five pound sleeping bag. My quilt goes down to zero Fahrenheit and it only weighs one pound. When you get into cold weather camping, stuff either gets heavy real quick or expensive. One or the other. If you want to camp in the winter, you have to spend money. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You need to spend money. My pad alone costs $300. And I'm not bragging. That's just what they go for. If you want a pad that is going to be good in the winter, you got to spend the money. Unless you buy cheaper pads and start layering like a bugger. Now, in his conditions, he should have a pad, the $300 pad, when I emailed him to let him know which one he should get. And he should have another one underneath it, which in turn protects the top one, the one you blow up. And you should also have a repair kit in case that one goes down. You have to understand, 90% of all your heat goes out the bottom. So basically your pad, if you were on a um, hammock, it's under the hammock. That, that's where all your heat goes. Literally the ground just takes your heat from your body and just sucks it out of you like a sponge. And within, within minutes you're freezing. And... Um, a lot of people think they need a big, heavy sleeping bag, and that's not true. It's the insulation. How much space is inside that sleeping bag is what you need. So that way, it's trapping the heat and bouncing it back. Now, the pads they sell are just amazing the way technology has gotten anymore. I mean, they reflect your heat back. They keep the cold away, and it's something else. But... Um, I run some heavy-duty pads. I run an amazing quilts. I mean, this stuff's keeping you warm. Now, another pointer is you shouldn't be wearing a big jacket like that when you're walking. When you're walking, you should have your clothes layered. T-shirt like this, uh, maybe light, something light on top. Because you're moving, you're heating up the core of your body. You're heating yourself up. You don't want to sweat. In a jacket like that, you're going to sweat. And that's a big mistake. Now, that jacket could go on top of the knapsack. And it should be used when you get to camp and you're not moving. Like if you're sitting down or there's a fire and you have your jacket on. Because now your body's going to cool down and now you're going to need something warmer. But that jacket should not be worn when you're, when you're actually walking because of the heat difference is what's going on. Again, very heavy things. I don't know why these were left in the, inside the boxes, which really made no sense to me. He carried this extra weight of boxes. He's not really conscious of the weight that he's carrying. You really have to be conscious. Now, if he was going to use these boxes and light a fire, I mean, okay, that's one thing. But he wasn't. He should have um, He should have taken those out ahead of time. So I don't know why he left them in there. It's an awful big bag for toilet paper. And... Um, He's not measuring the weights of anything. He has no idea what anything weighs. He doesn't have a scale. He has no idea. You'll notice in a lot of my videos, I'll hook a scale to my pack and I'll hold it up. 
And I know if it's 35 pounds, 40 pounds, I know what I'm going to put on my back. I know what I can carry. I know I can push myself to 55 pounds. When I start going above that, I start to hurt. You know. But there's a lot of stuff here he's carrying that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, look at the kindling. I guess that's for making a fire, but that's an awful lot of kindling. I mean, what is he making? A fire for a week? I mean, that's not what you do. You carry a little bit for a couple fires, but as you're walking, you're collecting. So you're pulling dry birch off a tree. You're grabbing some pine. You see some sap coming out of a pine tree. So you get your knife, pick a little bit of that off. Enjoy yourself when you're out there. And pay attention to your environment and what you can use and what you can't use. You don't want to carry stuff if you don't have to. Ounces equal pounds. That's just all there is to it. Now he's got this thing. He got to put a little rug in front of his tent. I have no idea what that does. It's just more weight. More weight. Now this almost, I almost fell off my chair when I seen this hoople's Two thermoses. Do you know what those weigh? I mean, they're like a pound and a half each. I mean, that's like three, four pounds right there. And then you've got water in them. Water is like the heaviest thing you can carry. Why water? You could have started a fire, set up your pots and pans, and boiled some water. Look at the snow. There's water everywhere. All you had to do was gather up some clean snow and put it in a pot and put it on a fire and let it melt. And believe it or not, you don't put snow in a pot with no water. You'll burn the snow. You want to turn around and add a little bit of water to your pot and then start adding snow as, and then as the snow melts, keep adding to it. And when you finally have your pot full, well, and it's boiling, you don't have to do anything else to it. You don't have to put, uh, you don't have to filter it. You don't have to put pills to it. You don't have to do nothing. You boiled it. It's good to go. You make coffee with it, whatever you want to use it for. You don't need those six pounds in thermoses. Put those on the counter. It's okay if you're going to work, but not out in the bush. No. You make your water. You process your wood. You learn to use what's around you so you don't have all this weight. That'll get you killed. So that's not needed. Now, I don't know what this other stuff was. He didn't even know why he brought it. Some type of flare for a bear or something. I mean, he didn't even know what he didn't even know what was in there. You always lay everything out in front of you. And you say, okay. And, and you put every... And I've done that. I've showed videos where you lay everything out. And then I look at the what I got laid out. I'll say, okay, that's my sleep system. Okay, that's my fire system. That And you make these little systems as light as possible. And then that's what you're going to put in your pack. And then you ask yourself, do I really need that stuff? But at the same time, you have to understand, this also works around your skill. It has to be your skill. And that's the thing. He's got food, um, all kinds of things. Now, that's an old pad that you blow up in. And he did state that, you know, crystal, they don't make pads like that now. The new pads have a big bag you connect and you fill it up with air and you press on it and then it fills it up. You don't breathe into them no more. You really don't. And you shouldn't breathe into a pad. It gets disgusting. You get fungus in it and everything else. But that was a total cluster mess up. And he put his life in danger. Apparently he had said in a text message that his wife came out and got him and he was, in a, he was basically in a stupid coma. And basically what happened was it was so cold that you don't wake up. Hoople's cat almost died last night. And that's the sad part about this. You don't even know you're dying when it's wintertime and you start to fall asleep and it gets so cold, your body just rolls up in a ball and then you just die. There are hundreds of homeless people that die every night when you get cold temperatures like this. They don't wake up. They don't even know they're dying. Might even be a very peaceful death. And there's a reason we have shelters to take them off the street and warm them up. You need proper equipment if you're going to do this. And if you don't have proper equipment, don't even try it. And how do you know if you got the proper equipment? You do not walk 10 minutes from the house. You go outside your door, you walk 5 feet, and you set up camp right there. And now you test it out. 
And then your wife or somebody comes out and checks on you to hate to see if you're, if you're still alive every couple of hours. He apparently had two feet of snow. I was a wrong... T- he tested himself on every level with the improper gear. That was crazy. Don't do that. I'm going to have a link to Hoople's cat. Go sub him. Apparently he's got a part two coming out. I mean, the guy almost died. You don't... I can't stress this enough that you have to practice in your yard, especially when you start getting into cold temperatures. And then you have to look at your gear and say, is that good enough to handle it? And you can't be cheap. If it's not, you just don't go camping. Don't just do it and say, okay, I want to make a video. Understand, your sleep system is gold. A great pad, $300 pad, a $300 quilt. I know, these are big numbers. But if you want to turn around and you want to have a nice, comfortable sleep and you want to live you got to spend the money. That's all there is to it. And uh, there's no other way around it. Now, you've seen survival things where they'll put a whole bunch of pine branches on the ground. Then they'll build a log fire. Then they'll... That takes a lot of skill. That's just not something anybody can do. Now, you can also go with a hot tent, which is a big teepee tent. And then you put a titanium stove in it and you run a pipe out. And that'll heat it. But you have to stoke it every three hours. And the problem with that is, is that you'll stay warm. You don't need heavy-duty sleeping bags now. But even that gets expensive. You're still into a $200 tent, a three or $400 titanium stove. I mean, you're still into five or $600. Either way. And, and that's just how it works. Now, there is an Army sleep system, and I think they run about $400. And they're amazing. You don't even need a tent with that system. You just put it all together, sleep right on the, the ground, throw a tarp down, and sleep right on top of it. Who cares? So it really depends on weight, what type of system you want to run, and how much money you got. But the money he spent, the tent's okay he's got. I'm not sure how heavy it is, but that tent's okay. But, I mean, my tent runs two pounds. I'm sure that tent's a lot heavier. His tent's probably a four or five pound tent. He's got a lot of, a lot of heavy items he's carrying. But you really have to give this a lot of consideration when you're going to camp in the winter. And this week alone, just in Tennessee and, you know, the winter going up toward Canada, they're getting two, three, four, five feet of snow. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous what they're getting. And to just put a pack on and run out there and say, okay, I'm going to camp in this. I don't care if you're 10 minutes away or one minute away. If you don't have the skills, you are putting your life in danger. You have to work your way up to that. You can't just put a pack on and run out there and do it. No. Hoople's cat made every mistake that you can make, and he's very lucky that his wife came out to check on him, or he would not be alive. And uh, he's really getting quite careless with this uh, prepping and camping. And Hoople's, if you watch my video, please don't do this again. You could have killed yourself. Don't do this again. Practice right in front of your house and practice with some of your gear. I did write you a long email. I gave you a bunch of links. Take it for what it is. But I do have videos that show you how to make char cloth, a fire kit. You really need to start rethinking what you're doing. And if you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. At least he's getting out. At least he's trying things. I don't see very many preppers doing that. I see a lot of preppers sitting behind your desk. I see a lot of preppers not doing shit, to be honest with you. And people follow him around. Why, I don't know. They seem to believe like, well, I'm going to hunker down. I'm going to bunker in. I'm never going to leave. But that's not true. You never know when you're going to have to bug out. You could have a forest fire come through. You could have, I mean, a volcano go off. You may have to bug out whether you like it or not. You may only be sleeping in your vehicle, but do you have a sleeping bag in your vehicle to handle the winter? Do you have a backup in case something goes wrong? If you have to walk out, like if he had to walk out from where he's living and the vehicle didn't work, could he have done it and would he have lived? I don't think so. He would have been in big trouble. You have to be able to walk a certain amount of ways because you never know what situations could happen or when they could happen. Now, that's just my point of view. I could be wrong. But um, when I prep, I prep for just about everything I can imagine from bugging out with my vehicle to putting a pack on and walking out. And if I'm going to have to walk out and it's zero degrees or minus 20, then I got to be able to handle it and I got to be able to survive inside my tent to do so. You really got to put a lot of thought and it does cost a fair buck to do it. 
once you get the stuff though, like once you get the tent and once you get the pad and the quilt, I mean, those are the big, big, big ones that hurt. Once you, once you get the basic stuff, the rest just kind of falls into play and then it's not so bad. And once you have it all, like I have everything I need right now, I'm really just buying a little thing here and a little thing there every now and then. Um, like, for example, I don't know if you see that. I picked up this this week. This is a, a compass that sits on your wrist. I've kind of been playing with this and trying this out. But um, it's just little doodads that you start to pick up later. And you start to rethink how you're going to build your kits. Now, once you get your kit built and you say, okay, this thing works. This thing's awesome. I can go out three, four days. No problem. Well, then I start to think of what are the things that can go wrong? Like, for example, I'm separated from my backpack. I go for a little walk away from camp and I go down the hill and I end up breaking my leg. I cannot get back to my pack. You know, so what do I have on me? My knife is on me at all times. I carry a fire starter on me at all times. Um, my watch is, is, is on me at all times. Now, this compass all times. I mean, my body literally carry certain items that are on me at all times no matter what so if i wander away from camp and something goes wrong you know the idea is to stay alive right well that's what ends up happening so now you start breaking down microsystems within your systems to figure out how you're going to make it and what you're going to do this is a good lesson on not what to do and he's going to run a second video which i can't wait to see this i hope he's got the video of the snow they had dumped on them in canada because it was something else they had like four feet of it but he lacks skills and i hope i don't hurt his feelings because i think it's amazing that he's posting it he's being honest he's he's not really you know it's the real deal and that's what people should be seeing you know, when somebody's putting a real deal out there and they're showing their mistakes and they're saying, look at this, that's who you learn from. You don't learn from some guy standing in front of a wall or walking around a yard pointing a camera at cats. I mean, this is bullshit. And if you believe that is the way SHTF is going to be, wow, I got some swamp land to sell you. But um, at least he's trying. I don't see anybody trying. I don't see anybody walking around with their packs. I don't see anybody critiquing their gear. I don't see anybody making their gear better in the way of surviving. I don't see nothing. All I see is everybody with a backpack by their front door saying, Yeah, I'm ready. Ready to go. I'll find out they don't got shit in that pack. Anyhow, go check out Hoople's cat. I didn't want to make too bad of a video to hurt his feelings. I'm not trying to hurt his feelings. Please, I'm not. I just, just really, he really worried me. I really thought he was going to, something's going to go bad with this. He needs to be a little bit more conscious that, you know, nature isn't nice. It'll take your life in a heartbeat if you if you don't have the skills to know what you're doing. So please, Hoopals, do a little more practicing near the door and uh, really invest in some proper equipment if you want to be out there, especially in Canadian winters. They're, they're pretty intense. Check it out. I'll catch you guys on the next one.